Hi, this is Emily. I am happy to present today Greg from uh, Bible Flockbox. Greg is a super successful YouTuber and he makes a lot of informational videos about God's Word, the Bible, current events, and all sorts of other related topics. So I am so honored that Greg showed up for this interview and I'm so excited for every one of our viewers to hear Greg's story because it's truly remarkable. So welcome Greg. Can you please introduce yourself shortly? Sure. Well, the pleasure is all mine. I don't know what else I can say than what you already said. I think that was a pretty good introduction. I just want to say thank you for uh, the privilege of being able to be on your program. Cool. Let's uh, get into it then. So if we start all the way from the beginning, um, how was your childhood? Like, where did you grow up and did you grow up in a religious family? Well, I grew up in Antioch, which is a city in northern in the East Bay area, close to San Francisco. And I grew up in a nominal Catholic family, which means that we were not very religious, but we did go to church occasionally. Um, and like on Christmas and Easter, we didn't really read the Bible at home, though. And I went to my first communion when I was 10 years old, and that actually sparked my interest in Jesus in the Bible. And I told my dad, I asked my dad to buy me a Bible, and he did. And I read a few chapters from the book of Genesis. But afterwards, I was distra distracted by the cares of this life, and I put my Bible away, and I didn't end up picking it back up until several years later. All right, so you grew up in the U.S. Um, I know that you're Polish, so how can that be? in Poland, but I moved to the United States with my family when I was three. All right, interesting. So not really any big religious influences in your life. Um, so what caused you to kind of get off track, kind of end up in this criminal environment and finally in jail? What went wrong, do you think? Well, I started using drugs at a young age, like smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol. I smoked marijuana every day for years, and I even used some cocaine and methamphetamine when I got a little older. And that actually led to me selling drugs. Using drugs led to me selling drugs because drugs cost money. And in order to fund my habit and my lifestyle, I needed to make more money, and so I started selling drugs. And by the time I was 23 years old, I was arrested for drug trafficking and gun possession, and I was sent, sentenced to nine years in federal prison. Wow, that's that must have been a shocker for you. Like, how did you take that at that time? Yeah, that was a big shock, especially at the beginning of my sentence. Um, I couldn't imagine being locked up in prison for like a decade. I didn't know how I was able, going to be able to get through it. But fortunately, I became a Christian early on and Jesus gave me the strength to get through all of that time. That is exactly what we want to talk about today. So how did God reach out to you when you were in jail? How did you get to think about God again, even though you hadn't for most of your childhood? You know, Emily, I believe that God was working on my heart even before I went to jail, but I just didn't want to listen to him. But there was a point in time when I cried out to God. And at that point in time, I believe he really started working in my life. And that was before I went to jail, actually. It was right before I went to jail. Um, I was addicted to drugs. My life was, a, I was using meth and I couldn't quit. Even though I tried to quit, I had no strength to quit on my own. I tried with no avail. And so I remember laying in my bed at night, uh, one night, and I just cried out to God. I said, God, if you're real, please help me. You know, Psalm chapter 8, verse 6 says, In my distress, 
I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. And he heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. And so God hears the sincere cries of those who are in distress, and he will intervene to deliver them. And so after I got to God, there were two occasions before I went to prison uh, where church volunteers came to my door and they invited me to study the Bible with them. And I believe that was God's promise. I turned them down because I was ashamed of my condition. I was using drugs. I didn't look good. And shortly afterwards, made a drug deal with someone with the DEA, and that's when I arrested. And jail time gave me time to reflect on my life, and the path that I was on was a dead end. The criminal life only really has two outcomes, and that's prison and death. And I realized that I needed to change something in my life, and so I started reading the Bible and attending Christian services. And that's when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior early on in my incarceration. And so I was converted rather quickly. And in a Christian service, I was convicted by the Holy Spirit that I was a sinner in need of Christ. And so I didn't hesitate and I accepted Jesus Christ into my life. So actually what you're saying is that God gave you an opportunity to turn to him before you got to jail by sending these people to your door but you didn't listen and that then resulted exactly, in like, you having to learn the hard way basically yeah you know so <laughs> do you feel like god, god helped you like would do do you see it as a blessing looking back that you actually ended up in jail yeah i do you know, I wanted to say that um, God gives us lessons in life so that we can learn from them. For example, I pray to God and he sent those people so they could maybe uh, share the gospel with me and I could be converted. But God is so gracious that sometimes you don't learn the first time. He allows us to repeat it again. And that was my case. I didn't learn the first time. And so he allowed me to learn it the hard way. And I do believe it was uh, necessary for me to go to jail in order to accept Jesus and to hear the gospel because I wasn't as willing to do it was on the outside. And so jail gave me uh, an opportunity to uh, accept the gospel because it gave me to reflect on my life. And also uh, in jail, oftentimes Christian volunteers from the outside would come to the jail to minister to inmates who are in jail. And when I was in jail, we had like 20 hour lockdowns, which means you were locked in your cell for 20 hours a day. And they only gave you like four hours free time a day. And so any time, anything, any occasion to get out of your cell was a good occasion. And oftentimes Christians would go to these church services just to get out of uh, their cell so they can have some free time. And that's what I, and that's when I started reading the Bible and I heard the gospel and I really liked it and I accepted Jesus in my life. So did that happen overnight or did you slowly go, start going to these services and then one day fully gave yourself to God or how would you describe that process? Well, it happened relatively quickly. Actually, within my first maybe three months of incarceration, I became a Christian, but it didn't take me very long to be, be convicted of my sins by the Holy Spirit and also accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I already felt guilty because of the type of the life that I was living. Um, God was working on my heart. Fortunately, I didn't have a callous heart. I felt bad for the things that I did and the way that I was living my life. And I remember I was attending this one Christian service where the volunteer, he was an elder of a local church. He taught us about the Ten Commandments and how uh, breaking the Ten Commandments is sin. And so I felt guilty for my sins. And he taught us how the wages of sin is death. And that if we wanted to be saved and forgiven from our sins, we could accept Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And so I felt the Holy Spirit 
working upon my heart to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior at that time. And so when that elder made an altar call, when he invited us to pray with him and accept Jesus in our lives, I didn't hesitate, raised my hand, and I prayed with him that day. And I tell you that when I prayed that prayer, I felt like there was this burden of guilt that was lifted off of my shoulders. And I felt this inexpressible joy that I had never felt in my life before that. And I believe that was the joy of being reconciled to God. Wow, that's amazing. I can definitely relate to that feeling. But I mean, you were in jail at that point in time. So after you were convicted that Jesus was the only way to salvation, did you only go forward from there? Like, how did you stay strong enough to not get caught up in any like prison gangs or get just get influenced by all these criminals around you? Well, it was by the type of friendships that I formed. Uh, I didn't really hang around gang members. Um, I hung around a lot of Christians where we could encourage each other and read and study the Bible together. There's a lot of things you can get caught up in jail with like drugs and gangs and there's also a lot of homosexuality unfortunately but you know what um, the bible for me was my safeguard from all of that and also uh, the positive christian influences i had around me because believe it or not there's a lot of christians in jail a lot of people become converted after going to jail because they're in a similar situation as I am. They realize the life that they were leading, uh, you know, is not the path that they should be on. And this changes them. They accept him in their life. Wow, that's amazing. So how long were you actually in jail, Greg? Um, I was sentenced to nine years, but I got released after eight years for good behavior in the federal. 85% of your time before you get released on good behavior. And so for me, that was eight years. Wow, that's a long time. So eight years, you actually time. had Jesus and the Bible as like your main source of education, entertainment, whatever you want to call it. Is that how it was? Well, I mean, there was other things that I would do. Also, they had jobs that you can do in prison. And so first I was in county jail, though. Let me explain a little bit. Before you get sentenced, you go to something called county jail. And after you get sentenced, they send you to like a real prison. Um, I was in county jail for like a year. And that's when I accepted Jesus. And then I got transferred to prison. You know, not only was I in the Bible and I was active um, in the church, in my religion. I also worked. I had a job where I worked seven hours a day. Uh, besides that, I would go work out on the yard. And so I tried to do a lot of different positive things in order to stay away from the drama in the prison. That's amazing. Did you successfully evangelize when you were incarcerated? Like, did your Christian group grow? Was that something that you found pleasure in when you were there? Yeah, I did evangelize. Um, like one thing that I did is I shared literature with people. Another thing that I did is I did one-on-one -on -one Bible studies with people. And I was convicted early on, like right after my baptism, to do evangelism. I think an important part of the Christian life is to witness and evangelize. We are all called to witness. You know, when Jesus gave his apostles the commission to go out and preach the gospel, it wasn't only to his apostles, it was to all of the church. We all have a part to play. And I think that um, if you don't evangelize, then that can have a crippling effect on your Christian life. You need to evangelize in order to, to maintain a strong connection with Christ. At least that was my experience. Amazing. And that's the thing, when you really love God and you talk about God in his spirit, then people can really not be angry at you. I guess not even some uh, criminal guy in prison. So uh, that's that's really brave and, and cool that you follow that instinct early on. Um, so let's talk about the end yeah. of your prison sentence. How were you feeling when you were about to get out of prison? Were you motivated to start a life outside? 
how were you in general planning to go about things and what ended up happening? Yeah, I couldn't wait. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen after I got released because I got deported to Poland upon my release because I was not a United States. But prison is definitely not a place that I wanted to stay for for the rest of my life for various reasons. And after I got released from prison um, and I came to Poland, fortunately, my dad was here. He has his own business. He's a general contractor. He was doing some contract work. And I think this uh, is by divine providence because my dad, since we have lived in the United States, <clears throat> now he's been like 30 years or longer, but since he has lived there, he has never had any jobs in Poland. And he got a job at the same time that I was being deported to Poland. And so he was there to pick me up from the airport. And with the money that he made from his job, he was able to buy me a flat so I can have some place to live before he went back to the United States. Wow, that's amazing. So a God arranged for your dad to work in Poland just at the time that you got released. I believe so. I don't know how else to explain it. No, it seems like it couldn't be a coincidence, right? So your dad was, um, was a huge support, I guess, but you you always lived in the U.S. So how did you go about building up a, like a network, getting friends and stuff like that in Poland? Was that easy for you? No, it wasn't easy at the beginning, especially because I didn't speak Polish that well. I speak Polish a lot better now since I've been living here for 10 years. But one of the first things that I did is look for a church because that was important to um, After that, I found a job as an English teacher. Fortunately, since I'm a native English speaker, it was not hard for me to find an English teaching job. And um, I also avoided negative influences, like some influences I had in the past before coming to prison. I stayed away from people who were involved in the criminal life. And I think that's important. If Jesus delivers you from a certain lifestyle or from a certain vice, uh, after you have been delivered, you don't want to go back and hang around with people who are uh, living uh, that same way because what's going to happen is you're going to be dragged back into that lifestyle. And so you want to find some kind of positive reinforcements in your new life. And for me, it was being a part of the church. Um, it was uh, working. I also started a YouTube channel shortly after that so that I could make Christian videos. So how long did it take you from the point in time when you got out of jail till you actually started your YouTube channel? It wasn't very long at all. Actually, all I have right now is my second YouTube channel because I had some issues with YouTube with my first YouTube channel, but I started that one in 2011. And that was like um, shortly after I got released from prison because when I was in prison, I did a lot of evangelism, like I mentioned, before sharing Bible literature, doing Bible studies, and I still had a passion for evangelism after getting released. It's just that I didn't speak Polish very well, so I was looking for an outlet which would allow me to do evangelism in English, and that's when I discovered YouTube and I started uploading Christian videos to YouTube and I did my channel, Bible Flock Box. And God has really blessed my efforts. Right now, my channel has over half a million subscribers and 62 million video views. And I get testimonies from people on a regular basis of how God has worked through my channel to help them, to get a better understanding of the Bible, to get closer to Jesus, to find a church near them, and to get baptized. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Um, so God has definitely been with you throughout the whole journey of, of evangelizing through YouTube. But how did you go about it at first? Did you want to tell what was in the Bible? Did you want to shed light on some specific topics? Or what was your idea behind it? Well, for me, no matter what kind of videos, I always wanted to incorporate the three angels' messages of Revelation chapter 14 into my content somehow, because the three angels are God's final warning to this world before the second coming of Jesus. And so I think it's important for people to understand that. 
And I have over 400 videos on my YouTube channel right now, I think. And I talk about various uh, subjects, but I always look for ways to try to incorporate the three angels messages. That's cool. But I know you also talk about current events and think that things that might kind of catch people's attention first off. So how do you mix that with Bible truths? Well, there's a lot of things that happen in the world that we see somehow. For example, there's a war going on in Ukraine right now. You know, Jesus spoke of wars and rumors of wars. People question, is this a sign of the end times? And so I made a video about that not too long ago. And I've actually found a few categories of that work well for me. And that has to do with Bible prophecy, uh, Bible questions answered, and videos where I make a video like 10 facts about um, the mark of the beast. And wow, that's super interesting. And that's also what a lot of people are interested in right now also people who are just learning about christianity so i would love to talk to you about more that more in the in the next episode but um in general if you just look at your role right now as a christian in this world what is the one thing that you are most passionate about? What do you think God is specifically calling you to do right now? Well, I'm, I'm most passionate about sharing the gospel any way, shape, or form. I want people to come to know Jesus because that's the most important thing. And also to understand his world, word. But besides that, I'm also a family man. I'm married and I have three beautiful children and my family very much. Amazing. So how do you practice uh, Christianity in your everyday life with your family? What kind of habits, routines or practices do you follow as a family? Well, I think it's important to devote some time to God in prayer and the study of his word and also sharing your faith. Those are some basic Christian practices that I stick to on a regular basis so that me and my family, we can maintain a good connection to God. And also we go to church really as well. Amazing. And do you, as a family, do you read the Bible together like every day? Yeah, every day we make it a point. Uh, we try to make it a point at least to read some scripture. Um, to sing a hymn together, and also pray before our kids go to school in the morning. And also in the evening, when we go to bed, we pray together before we go to bed. And we go to church on a regular basis every week as well. Those are great habits. And is YouTube and your ministry, if I can call it that, online, is that yeah. your only occupation as of now? Yeah, right now I'm a full-time YouTuber. Amazing. So do you only make videos or do you also sell some products or special programs or something like that? Well, I sell some Christian t-shirts in order to fund my channel. And I also have uh, sponsors and donors, which helps up my channel as well. That's amazing. So if you were to give one piece of advice to the viewers, Christian or non-Christian, to help them get closer to God, what would that be? We know oftentimes when I talk to people who tell me they are struggling with their faith, I find that they are neglecting one of a few basic Christian practices, and that is prayer, reading the Bible, going to church, or witnessing. So if you do these things, uh, they will go a long way to save you from drifting away from God and help you make a relationship with God. And that is so important. Like I agree 100%, but it's just so hard with all the distractions of, of modern life. So how do you go about kind of, yeah, not being distracted in essence? 
Yeah, there's uh, distractions. There's going to be more distractions. They're not going to go away. And so we have to make God a priority. Um, what I like to do before I do anything is devote some time to prayer and the study of God's word. For some people, that may mean waking up a little early before work. For me, fortunately, making Christian videos is my work, so I incorporate that into my schedule. But we have to make God a priority. He made us a priority when he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. The least we can do is devote some time to him in prayer and the study of his word and also try to share our faith with others. Yeah, definitely. I think good habits is also really important in keeping that up. But I mean, the yes. world is crazy, right? And there are so many things happening. And it's really interesting to try to connect it to Bible prophecy and kind of use it as a motivation to devote more time with, with God to God. But I've personally experienced that you can also kind of get so caught up in everything that's wrong with the world and end up spending almost too much time on that. So how do you find that balance and how do you not just get overwhelmed by the details of Satan's working in, in this world? Because I've read the end of the Bible and I know Christ wins. So you're not scared at all about anything going on in the world, basically? No, you know, there's numerous promises in the Word of God which talk about God's protection, God's providence. He will provide for us if we are faithful and obedient to Him. And even when bad things happen, He will give us grace and strength in order to be able to endure. And so I rely on those promises and I trust in God and try to have a positive attitude. Definitely, I agree that it's not something we should, as Christians, engage in. It's this fear-mongering and kind of focusing on everything that's bad. We should try to see the light in everything. Is that something that you always also try to give to people through your YouTube channel so that they kind of go away from your channel with a sense of hope and encouragement? Yes. You know, it reminds me of a scripture read uh, recently. I think it's in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, if I'm not mistaken. But Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulation. But uh, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. He said something like, uh, uh, do not fear to overcome the world. You know, Jesus will give us peace in the midst of no matter what bad thing is happy, stay focused on him. And yes, I do want to encourage people and um, uplift people through my YouTube videos. Amazing. I can only say for myself that I have really enjoyed every video that I've watched from you, and I can only encourage anyone who's watching this interview to go and do the same. You really have a talent for conveying such huge truths in, in very um, short and kind of... Um, yeah, digestible um, ways. So thank you so much, Greg, for everything that you're doing. I am so happy that you wanted to talk to me today, and I hope that we will get a chance to continue the conversation too. Sure, it was my pleasure, and thank you for having me on your program.